And after that, we also need to choose like the location to operate. And also we have to um, determine our business model, business structure. And also we should name our company and register it. And also the next part that we should uh, really look at and consider is the human resources part. Uh, what, uh, how many workers we will need to have to like smoothly operate our company? What kind of expertise do we need? Will, do we need like a marketing manager or sales manager or someone who has an expert in expertise, expertise in a uh, sales or like in accounting? We should also consider our human resources. So, and after that, uh, the most important part is that the finance, financial issues uh, financial issues like include the first of all the price of our product or the service and also the how much of a starting capital or in other words money we need to have start our business like if we need some equipment or like raw materials how much do they cost and how much money we do we have to have to start our business and all this calculation should be made and should be estimated and and all these all these parts we answer is all together called the business plan or this proposal so when we have the and so when we have And when we have our business plan, after that, we, uh, if we like, we, uh, write our business plan we have this idea because like we believe that our idea will become very successful we can like make profit we have we can uh, expand it so we uh, need to uh, start considering act consider actually bringing the plan into the life so the biggest issue is the starting capital which is the money to uh, implement our idea to the life. So, so some people have like savings accounts, which they have saved for their, um, could be for their entire life or for some, uh, for uh, years or for months. And they can use their savings account, savings money to implement their idea. And also some people have friends or family who can lend or give them the money to start their business. Um, but not every people, not every person has that chance to uh, have this savings or have the family or friends who can support them. So the question is where we are gonna have, where we will have, uh, we will find the money to start our business. So, so we will uh, need to do a research and after uh, so when we talk uh, think about these ways to find the money i think that most of the people will be reminded of the bank loans this will be the first idea that will pop up in our heads i think so but the problem is that um, banks do not issue loans so easily. They have a long and detailed procedure to check the business uh, to affirm that will, it will pay back the money. It means that the bank will uh, check your company um, from the scratch. So it means that it will look at your financial statements, your operation cycle, your management, your risks, like your market and everything. So when it is a startup company, when you have nothing, 
it means that it's um uh, your your company will not have any of this your company could be like could be very successful but on the other hand it could also fail so it's like a very high risky so the bank will not um, give you the loan because uh, banks will check all your statements will bank no, check, uh, check your company and when you have nothing to show to them bank will consider you as a risky and so they so it won't give you the won't lend you the money so the bank loan is off the list for startups and so companies will need to find another way to raise money and after searching for the capital like uh, after searching for the ways to raise this money uh, people would likely to leak uh, the internet resources and everything else would likely lead you to the venture capital. So, so what is the venture capital? Venture capital in short VC is the uh, form of a private equity that and a type of financing that investors provide to startup companies and small businesses that are believed to have long-term growth potential. And the important part is here that and the investors believe uh, that the company have the, this growth potential. And so who are these venture capitalists? Who are these investors? And they could be like the well of investors, well of like people who have that excess amount of money that they do not use, that they can, could invest in you and make a profit out of it. It could be investment banks and other financial institutions. And, and what do the uh, venture capitalists offer to the company? And first of all, it's the money. Of course, it's the funding to start your company. And besides that, venture capitalists um, give you the technical and and managerial expertise because these people, these institutions are very big uh, people or institutions that have a very wide experience in that area, have a very wide connection of people who can help you. And so these uh, uh, factors besides the money also is invested in your company. So, mm, so the venture capitals like invest in you and money, but also the expertise that we need to uh, start our our or your company. And these venture capital is, capital investments are done mostly in steps. The first step is like when you have the at the very first of your start, and it means that when you have like a only your plan, only your idea, or maybe a prototype product, but you don't have actual sales, actual numbers to show them. And that uh, investment um, period called seed investing. And after investors give you that seed investing, seed uh, capital, they will like, uh, check you occasionally, like after one or two years, they will have, um, they will assess your growth, assess your improvement of the company, and they will decide whether to give you additional, uh, additional funding, additional money to expand your business. So this venture capital process is like a very continuous process, which can give you the money at the very first and then uh, continue to give it like after, one year, two year, or five years, and more than, and longer than that. So venture capital is like um, financing that uh, investors provide to the companies that have a uh, growth potential. And if we look at the uh, examples, um, the very well-known example is a Google company. We all know what is a Google. 
So this Google company like in 1999 acquired and $25 million from these two uh, venture capitalist companies and called Cleaner Perkins Cuffles and Buyers and Sequoia Capitals. So these uh, venture capitalists, of course, like had very um, large amount of a profit because Google has become the a very large part of the internet. And the next uh, example I want to talk about is in WhatsApp. It's an, uh, it's an telecommunication application which was launched in 2011. Um, before its launching, it uh, raised money from the Sequoia Capital and the initial investing was $8 million. And af af after that, over the years, Sequoia Capital invested $60 million to the WhatsApp. And it made from its investment a uh, profit of $3 billion. And after, and when the um, WhatsApp was acquired by the Facebook for $16 billion, the Sequoia Capital also made a large amount of money. So, so these two are the uh, very successful examples of venture capital investment. If uh, venture capitalists can uh, determine, can find that um, right business that can really grow, then it shows that it can really uh, gain a very high profit. So uh, venture capital is the one uh, one kind of fun type of uh, uh, raising cap, one way to raise a capital. And after that is a crowdfunding. So let's talk about what is the crowdfunding. And the crowdfunding is the practice of raising funding through multiple funders, often via popular crowdfunding sites. And crowdfunding gives startup entrepreneurs the opportunity to raise startup funding for their business and can help a company promote its products or services. And setting up a crowdfunding campaign is not very difficult. And often it's crowdfunding websites. So you have to register, log in into the crowdfunding website. And after that, you will have to uh, enter, insert your company uh, information like what is your product, what is your goal, and how much of a money you are going to raise, and in how much uh, how much of a time you will raise this money. So after you, uh, so after you like insert this um, information, your uh, your like a campaign will be on the site and people who see this and who are interested in your company or in your startup business will uh, will give you the money, will uh, like donate you to the money. And the crowdfunding uh, has its four types uh, relating to the what you give back to these people who are giving you the money. So the first one is the, like a donation-based crowdfunding. It's when people give you a money, but you like give nothing in return. So it means that these people who are donating for your business, for your startup company is like uh, supporting you, uh, supporting you. And the next one is the debt-based uh, debt crowdfunding. It means that uh, these people will give you the money, but you will in return have to um, pay uh, interest by a certain uh, by a certain deadline. So it's like a loan. And then the next is rewards based crowdfunding, and it's an, it's the most popular way of uh, crowdfunding. And the rewards vary by the size of the donation, which uh, in uh, which supports higher contributions. It means that if you give a higher amount of money, then the company, then that that startup company will give you uh, like a reward uh, based on your 
in my, uh, based on your uh, destination, based on your amount of money that you have given. So these rewards can be in form of like a t-shirt or the products that your company sell or the service that your company um, provides. And the last um, type of uh, crowdfund is, uh, crowdfunding is equity-based crowdfunding. And equity-based crowdfunding is like same to the uh, same to the giving like uh, shares of your company to the investors. It means that these people's um, these people give you the money via this website, and in return you give them the you uh, give them the small portion of your company. Uh, in other words, like the shares of your company. So in real life, the most popular way, the most popular uh, type of a crowdfunding is rewards-based crowdfunding um, because it's, and it's most, most suitable for startup companies because it's the, uh, and rewards can be your own products, your own services. So it means that it could be a marketing of your company in some way. So this rewards-based crowdfunding is one way to consider if you're gonna raise the capital. And so let's look at the examples of crowdfunding sites. The first one is the Kickstarter. It's a company, uh, it's a platform that was uh, established in 2009 and it, ha it has uh, raised more than $5 billion for more than uh, 192,000 projects. And it's the reward-based reward -based, um, platform crowdfunding site. So if we look at this, this is the um, crowdfunding example. And if you, as you can see, there is the name, the purpose of this um, crowdfunding. And this is the example of raising money to the gaming coffee table, it says. And there is an, a brief uh, description of this gaming platform and there's the money that's needed to raise to be raised and it says it's in 2019 219000 dollars but it says that the money raised is have exceeded the um, original goal and it's already 146% and more Moreover, it has like 28 days left to raise the money. So this is like an, one example. And the next example is the GoFundMe. And this um, platform is more the nation based. So there are like many people who are, who are in need of money that is like um, asking other people to donate for them, but also uh, the startup companies can also enter their uh, information into the site and raise money. So crowdfunding is um, is a um, platform that gives the startup companies the chance to raise money from public, and it's also one of the suitable ways, I think. And this was for the startup companies. And now let's talk about the um, raising capital for existing businesses. Uh, let's say we have, uh, you have, a, you own a factory and your, your products are selling very well, your business is booming and you are very successful. So you decide to have like your, to open your second factory. And to open that second factory too, you will need also a lot, a large amount of money. Uh, for 
building the factory building, for buying the equipment, for buying the raw materials, and to attract new workforce. So the, you will need a lot of money. So And this example shows that not only startup companies have the need to raise capital, but also existing businesses have this uh -huh, have this need to raise capital. But their goal is slightly different. Uh, for startup companies, they need they raise money to start their company to start their uh, operation. But for these existing businesses who have like To be uh, for the expansion, or for more than for more developing uh, factors. And so we are back to the bank bank loans, and in contrast to startup companies that have operated for a certain period of time. Uh, and companies that have operated for a certain time uh, have established themselves in the market. So they are uh, less risky. So when uh, bank check your status, your financial statements, your operation, it's uh, less risky. So the chances of, of getting a loan is much higher. And so, so existing businesses can get a loan from the banks. And so now let's uh, look at the example of bank loans in Mongolia. So we have um, the soft loans from uh, small and medium enterprises development fund. So Mongolian government has established this fund in 2020 to uh, to support domestic production, to support domestic companies. And it gives to the uh, small enterprises soft loans. And what means by soft loans is that it's the loan with no interest or below market rate of interest. So it means that soft loans, this uh, develop, development fund gives the companies um, loan with a very low interest. And so um, there are many companies, there are many enterprises who got this loan in Mongolia. And we, uh, our major banks also have specific loans like a working capital loan or like a construction loan, which is, uh, which is designed for like apartment building or other construction buildings. And also we have investment loans. It, it, uh, it finances like investments, fixed asset purchases, equipment, equipment purchases, and so on. So we have these specific loans from the banks. And that's all like for the uh, loans. And then the next, uh, Funding option is uh, company profit. And when company has operated for a certain amount of time, it of course has uh, some profit. So the profits are used in two ways. The first one is the dividends, which means that company gives the dividends uh, annually or uh, upon their decision to shareholders. and and the part that is not given to the shareholders is left as in retained earnings in the company. So the company can use this retained earnings to reinvest it in their own businesses, to ex expand it, to buy this equipment or to like rent more offices and so on. So this retained earnings can be one, could be one way to like source our financial capital. And then the next uh, 
a way to raise the capital is public offering. What is a public offering? And it's an selling, it's basically selling securities to, to the public. It means that, and that the company which was um, private becoming public and a private company like issuing its shares and uh, offering it to the public offering to the shareholders. So the public offering is done in two ways. The first one is the initial public offering. And it's when it's the first time a private company issues stock to the public. It means that the this private company is becoming that public company. So this is called the initial public offering. And the other is the secondary offering. It's, it's when a company has already made an initial public offering, issues a new set of shares to the public. It means that the, that the company which has um, offered its shares to the public um, can raise money, can get um, capital from the public like the second time, third time or fourth time. And all this is called the secondary offering. And so let's talk about uh, more about the initial public offering. And so initial public offering is done when the uh, company in, is, is in need of money and when it offers its shares to the public and um, raises that money. And when doing the, when launching an IPO, a specific set of events occurs which the selected IPO underwriters facility. So the first one is that an external IPO team is formed in the company, including the lead and additional uh, lawyers, certified public accountants, and securities and exchange commission experts. And after that, the information of the company is um, compiled, including its financial performance details of its operation and the management history, risk, and expected future um, returns. And so all of this is like um, collected and it's um, circulated for the review. And after it passes this review um, process, uh, the company can launch the, its shares in the market. So, so what's the advantages and disadvantages of the initial public offering? So advantages is that first of all, it's of course financial benefit. Company raises money to fund its uh, operation. And then the next one is the publicity. Um, by publicity, we mean that the um, company, when the company is launching its shares to the public, it uh, um, gives all of these, all of its information uh, to the public and public sees that. So, uh, so the uh, company becomes more well known. So it means that, Uh, so it means that their products will be known to a new group of uh, new group of potential customers. So this subsequent, subsequently uh, leads to an increase in market share for the company. And these are the advantages of IPO. And then the, we have also disadvantages. And disadvantages include. Uh, and disclosure for investors, as we said, as I said before, uh, to launch an IPO, a company um, like discloses all of its information to the public, so it may contain that information which is which could have been like a secret of a company to the uh, to the public. So 
this disclosure of uh, information is kind of a disadvantage. And when the company launches, uh, when company becomes public, it has to uh, obligate the regulations by Securities and Exchange Commission. It means that they, the company should uh, follow the rules of this commission. So it's a disadvantage. And so let's look at the uh, IPO examples. We all know the Alibaba, right? Alibaba is a, a very well-known Chinese company. And it launched its IPO on September 18th of 2014. And it was, it became the largest IPO at that time. Um, the capital raised was 25 and $21.8 billion. And, and after it, like initial uh, offering four days later, and they, the company has sold more shares and the total IPO became $25 billion. So what made the, so what made it so popular is that the company's uh, chairman at that time announced that he is like intending to expand into other markets outside of China to the Europe and the United States. So this uh, announcement made uh, company more popular so this amount of money could could be raised. And then the next example is the Meta company formerly known as a Facebook. It launched its IPO on May 17th of 2012 and it has raised 16 billion dollars. And that's also an example of one successful initial public offering. And and to conclude our today's lecture, we have like looked at the ways to raise money to raise capital um, for startups. And first of all, it includes venture capital and crowdfunding. And the uh, raising capital for existing companies include bank loans, our retained earnings and public offering. And uh, uh, for startups, it also includes like the our savings or like the family and friends money. And so that's all for today's lecture and thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, please ask now. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for thank you. your presentation. And the next session we will Q and A session maybe for our audience. You, if you have question, you can write in room chat or you can raise your hand. Yeah. Maybe in um uh, first question in room chat we have oh. we yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, you can see this? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, so the first um, question is, um, we want to start a business, and but we don't have the capital. Do we need investors' help in building this business? It says. So I would like to ask for it. And if you have that opportunity to not get these investors' help, then it's better to not get uh, investors' help because when you um, get this investor's money, you will have to um, give them in return some 
in the return um, um, profits, like like interest, or you have to give them the part of your company. So if you have like your own savings, or if you have that family or friends that who can help you, and then it's better not to get the investor's help. But if you have like no other option, of course you should get the help. And then the second question is, we have a business for capital and do you think we should open many business branches or focus on one business first? So with, so I understood that uh, this business have, it's like the uh, starting capital. So, so uh, the priority should be uh, first of all, like on one business, I think, because if you are like starting your own business right now, it means that you haven't experienced uh, and the market, you haven't experienced like what is your, uh, whether your products will sell uh, more or less, whether you can be successful or not, you don't know it right now. So I think that you should focus on one business first. And if it seems to be successful, if it really generates a profit, if it really gives you that profit, then you should like expand it like uh, at least like six months or a year later, I think. Thank you for your answering. Mm -hmm. I think I think we don't have no more questions. Okay. Yeah. I will continue this session to closing it. Just okay for Miss Unda. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for Miss Unda is sharing your knowledge with us. Is it? I hope this knowledge will be beneficial and for our audience. Thank you for Mandak University to join in this event. Until Friday, thank you for Miss Unda to take your session in this day. Can you take a picture for documentation? For giving me this opportunity to present here today. And it was a great experience for me. So thank you very much again. Yeah, yeah maybe we can take a picture of her. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand the question. Thank you. Well, we mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks.